everyone, my name is Lizzie Lee. And if you don't know me already from my other social medias, at Lizzie Lee Med on Instagram and TikTok, go ahead and give me a follow over there. Um, I am basically a newly minted doctor. Last week I found out I matched into emergency medicine, my dream specialty, and I'm super excited to share that news with you guys. Um, I am an IMG, meaning I went to a Caribbean medical school. And um, I just want to kind of share my story, give hope to some IMGs out there. Um, there is a rainbow at the end of the storm, I promise. So I just wanted to go ahead and just talk about what I did and what my resume was, my average scores, like the title says, I'm super average. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, hop on here, share my journey and inspire you hopefully. <laughs> um, real quick, I am going to put in the videos of me finding out last week about Match so you guys can see that. Oh my God. What, what, what? What? I what? What? I got the email early? <laughs> okay, let's delve into it. First off, I will tell you my scores. I am not um, ashamed. I'm not shy about you know, scores on what I got. So first off, I will talk about my MCAT. Uh, I know that's the beginning of the journey for pre-meds out there. Um, I actually went Caribbean because I didn't do too hot on the MCAT. MCAT, I took it twice. The first time I got a 16 um, and the second time I got a 19. So those score conversions, I believe are 485 and 490 um, in the new conversion. So as you know, that's a really bad score. So um, that's why I ended up going Caribbean. And then when I went to Caribbean Medical School, then we have to take our board exams. And a lot of people were, you know, DM me wondering if it correlates in any way. Um, I don't think so because on my board scores, I did pretty decent, but still very, very average. Uh, step one, I got a 225. And then step two, I got a 236. I believe if you look up literally average test scores for whatever year I was in, um, they were literally the average. If not, I think a little below average. So whatever, it's okay. I'm still a doctor, I'm still match, so take it as you will. Okay, so how did I match into emergency medicine as an IMG with pretty mediocre board scores? Uh, I'll talk about my resume. So I have my CV lined up right here and I'm just gonna go through it. Um, I was a part of a lot of like organizations, professional organizations that dealt with emergency medicine because that's what I wanted to go into. So I know EMRA, which is Emergency Medicine Residents Association is something you should definitely look into if you wanna go in emergency medicine. Um, and also ASEP, which is American College of Emergency Physicians. I was a part of those. And I know for family medicine, let's say, they have American College of uh, Physicians and internal medicine, they have a different one and surgeons, whatever, whatever. So every specialty has their own thing so definitely join those organizations as for academic experiences i did some research i did have research during the covid pandemic um before that i had no research on my resume at all and i was like okay i need to really find something to spruce myself up so during the pandemic um my school became virtual virtual online learning so i had a little extra free time i actually reached out to um somebody on Instagram that I found on TikTok Instagram, one of the doctors, um, his name is Sean Carbonell. He's with Ovid Bio and also Kirkglioblastoma. Shout out to him. His Instagram is brain surgeon dropout. He's really cool. But he actually let me be a part of his research project. So I was able to put that on my resume. Um, also, I just put any like case presentations that I did in school on my resume as well. And I was actually a teaching assistant, uh, TA, when I was in med school on the island and I did that for like a semester, but that also went on my resume. Um, next, I have leadership experience. So I actually love volunteering. It's like something that um, really speaks to me. So for that, I actually hosted this charity event for four years consecutively where I got models, local models together with local photographers and then they would pay a cover to participate in the event and we raised like thousands of dollars for charity. So that was something that um, got asked a lot about in my interview because people were very fascinated by that. So I would say put something in your resume that's not ne necessarily medical related, but shows that you have initiative, you have drive, you're thinking outside the box, something very unique, you know? Um, I think a lot of us are gonna have like, oh, I volunteered at a clinic, I did this and that, but like something as different as like creating an event for charity that 
doesn't deal with medicine at all, that's definitely a speaking point during your interviews for sure. Um, I was also a board member at my local fraternity when I was in med school, Phi Delta Epsilon. I also think that's a good fraternity to join if you're in med school and they have that fraternity. I actually did you know, meet like-minded people in the fraternity. They gave me a lot of resources for school and um, that's just a good fraternity as well, just in general. And then also for my local church, I was vice president a couple years back. So I just put that on as my leadership as well. Okay, for the volunteering experience, I had um, volunteering for my local community. Um, I was a part of like the beauty pageant world. So I would go out, raise money for Vietnamese veterans and stuff like that. I, w I did that for maybe like five, six years. So I put that on my resume um, as well. I also would host like social media events. Uh, we did a how we got into med school Zoom charity event where we talked to a lot of pre-meds um, about how we got into med school. I did it with a bunch of my uh, med school friends at the time from different schools like Harvard, I don't know, like a DO school. We just all found each other on social media and we just wanted to kind of share our experiences. And um, that was really cool, but I was able to put that on my resume as something that I did you know, for volunteer. Like I said, anything that's very just innovative, anything that's different, I think um, is worth noting on your resume. And then I would clean up the beaches and, and then I also, I was volunteering at like uh, clinics and stuff and I put that on there. So for certifications, I put um, BLS and ACLS certified, which we should all be. And then also I took an, the initiative to take the DEAX waiver uh, certificate, meaning as a physician, I am able to prescribe opioids to people during the opioid crisis. And it's basically to kind of help the opioid crisis in general. So I feel like that was good for me too, to have on my resume. Also for my hobbies, I just put modeling and that was something that um, I picked up as a hobby to overcome body dysmorphia and um, build my self-confidence. And I feel like that was also a topic to um, talk about during the interviews as well, because it's a little different. So all in all, um, that is my CV. Those are my grades. And let me know if you have any questions, like other questions, I guess. Um, I guess I'll just end this video with some motivation. I, you know, applied to 50 med schools in the US um, with those low board scores that I told you for the MCAT. Like, of course, nobody was gonna accept me. Took the shot, went Caribbean. Went Caribbean, you know, passed my board exams with average scores. And I matched into my dream specialty uh, last week. So to you out there, like literally struggling right now, um, in your pre-med classes, on the MCAT, you're struggling. If you're in med school, you're struggling. Um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, I promise. Uh, I actually had a lot of stuff happen during med school. You know, um, I took a semester off because my dad passed away, he got sick, and my uncle also passed away. And then the coronavirus pandemic hit. There was just a lot of adversity that's always going to present itself to you. And at the end of the day, you just kind of need to hone in, focus on that end goal and, and just work towards it. It doesn't matter. These are just noises, right? These are just like rocks on your way, you know, to your journey. But at the end of the day, you will get there and then you can share your experience with everybody that's, you know, at the end of the road or in the middle of the road or hasn't reached the end of the road yet, you will be able to share your experience with them and maybe inspire one person. That's all it takes. All right, so um, like I said, go ahead and give me a follow on my other socials uh, at Lizzie Lee Med on Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you later.